Hey everyone, Peter Zion here. I just wanted to put everything that we know about the vaccines all in one place. It's mostly good news and I'm going to try to give you a bit of a timeline so we have some idea of where we're going. Now what has happened in the week of Thanksgiving is we have two vaccines that have now applied for approval with the Food and Drug Administration, which is the government institutional responsible for deciding whether or not this thing can go into general circulation. The first one is Pfizer, the second one is Moderna. And what these two vaccines have in common is that they are a fundamentally new system. They use something that's called messenger RNA or mRNA to train the body to attack the spike protein of the coronavirus molecule. Uh, the idea being if you can train the body to do that, then that spike and the spike protein cannot latch on to a human cell and propagate. Now, so far, as reported, and we don't have peer-reviewed data yet, we won't have that for another couple of weeks, so keep that in mind, it appears that both of these vaccines are wildly effective in excess of 90%. Uh, in addition, in the testing, not a single person who did develop coronavirus with the vaccine ended up with a severe case that required hospitalization, so great news there. In addition, the side effects appear to be very mild, on the whole, for the two-shot system, for the first shot, it's less intense than what you would get from a tetanus shot or a flu shot, maybe some headaches, maybe some injection site pain, and then maybe equivalent to those sorts of shots for the second shot. So two shots, three weeks apart, no really severe uh, reactions that we have seen to this point. So good news. There's a third one out there too, the Oxford system being developed in the UK. Now, we're probably not gonna see much about that here in the United States for the next few weeks, and not simply because it's a, a foreign product. Uh, the issue is one of reliability. Uh, the Oxford folks had an error in their manufacturing process, so for one segment of their test population, people only got a half dose. So some of the data regards a full dose, some of the data regards a half dose, some regards a half dose followed by a full dose. So three different treatment regimens given to three different age groups, it's kind of a mess of the data. But even if you go with the least effective formula and the least effective treatment for the most vulnerable population, they still generated a minimum of a 60% uh, reduction in cases, which honestly, we were aiming for 50 with this. So even the worst case scenario with this third one is still above our wildest expectations as of a couple months ago. So good, good, good news. Uh, the problem we see moving forward is distribution. Now, both the Pfizer and the Moderna systems require a pretty intensive cold chain with storage capacity and distribution capacity at negative 94 degrees. Now that's, that's a problem. I mean, that's like medical grade research facility freezers. Most hospitals, most even large hospitals don't have anything like that. But the news is getting better. So remember, mRNA, it's a new system. We've never done it before. So they started, Pfizer and Moderna, they started with being overly conservative with their storage and distribution requirements. So they started at negative 94. But with every month that passes, they take something out of a freezer, they put it into a different storage container, and they test it out. And so in the case of Pfizer, it's already come down from negative 94 to negative 70. Still ultra cold chain, still need dry ice, but better than it was. Moderna has gone from negative 94 down to negative 20 degrees centigrade, which is about zero Fahrenheit, which means that that stuff can be stored in a commercial grade freezer. So with every week that goes on, we're discovering that the storage capacity, the distribution requirements are getting less and less onerous. And this is fantastic. So the next question is time frame. When are we gonna see this starting to come out? Well, the FDA, like I said, is the institution to watch. They're the ones who will sign off or not on this. And they are looking at a window between December 8 and December 20 for making their rulings. They're going through the data. They're running some of their own tests. This is honestly light speed for a government institution like the FDA, which normally takes years to approve things. So we should, we should have preliminary doses of both of these vaccines coming out before the end of the year. And one of the fun things about having a global health crisis and bottomless supplies of government money is that you can do things a lot faster. 
And you can do things that maybe in retrospect weren't really economically viable. So in the case of Moderna and Pfizer, as soon as they had their formula back in May, they immediately started mass production. Now, ramping up from zero, it's not like we're gonna flip a switch on December 20th and have a half a billion doses of this. Now, we're still just talking about single digit millions. But the stoppers are there, the syringes are there, the vials are there, the distribution system is being built out. So we are very likely to have more than one vaccine by the end of the year. Now, there is a debate within the Trump administration over who gets this first. Some folks are, like um, Fauci, are saying it needs to go to the first responders and the medical per personnel because they're the ones who are likely to be the weak chain in our overall system and competing with this. Reasonable. Then there's people like Deborah Burks who are saying, no, we have runaway death rates among elderly communities and we've got to stop the death first. You know, they're both right. Uh, so it's really not a question of what's the bad choice, it's what's the, the least bad choice. So what we're probably going to see is starting at the end of this year, first, healthcare workers. Second, people in long-term care facilities, such as retirement communities. Third, people whose careers make them natural disease ver vectors. And that's everything from frequent flyers to bus drivers. Fourth, everyone over the age of 18 who is in one, in one of the first three categories. We will probably not have enough doses to get to group four until at least April 1st, maybe even June 1st. But again, we have two vaccines and that gets around a lot of the production bottlenecks, hopefully. Now, it's not all good. Uh, because we have two vaccines that are both mRNA, it is highly likely that we are going to have overlap in the production cycle that is going to lead to bottlenecks. But that brings me to one final bit of fairly good news, is that in addition to Pfizer and Moderna and now in failure, I forgot the third one, the British one, Oxford, there's actually a fourth vaccine out there that's getting very close to seeking approval, and that's the Johnson & Johnson formula. And this is the one that honestly I'm most optimistic about. First, it's a single shot as opposed to two shots for the other three. Second, a standard refrigerator will work for storage, so it's the easiest one to distribute. And third, it's a more traditional formula as opposed to that mRNA which is in many ways why it's been a little bit slower. The manufacturing process and the research process is a little bit more lengthy. But what that means is we are unlikely with the J&J &J formula to see any significant overlap with the manufacturing systems required for the other vaccine formats. So with just Pfizer and Moderna, we are looking at starting a two-shot immunization program for the general population in the second quarter of this year. It will take a minimum of three months to finish, probably closer to nine. But if we get J&J &J in the mix, we can probably collapse the time frame by more than half. And that would suggest that by the end of the summer of 2020, 2021, we're there. And remember, we don't have to immunize everyone. For something like COVID, 70 to 85% is kind of the range that we probably need to achieve herd immunity. Well, two thirds of Americans say that they are open to getting the vaccination. So if you take those two thirds, plus the people who have already suffered from the virus, we're there. And Johnson & Johnson could help us get there very quickly. Okay, that's all for me today. Feel free to go to zion.com to sign up for the newsletter. Items like this are always free. And if you found this useful and or interesting, I do ask that you go to feedingamerica.com. A lot of people have suffered for a very long time. And even in the best case scenario where Johnson & Johnson comes out you know, tomorrow and we can start mass vaccinations in March and be done by June, we're still talking about literally billions of meals being mixed, missed. And Feeding America is in the business of connecting surplus food to people in need for a very, very low cost. Okay, that's it for me. Until next time.